All right. Well, hello, everyone, and welcome to our Chrome OS webinar with uh, Citrix and Google and Zintegra. Happy to have all you guys. Uh, I think I've used the word super a gazillion times in the last couple of days, but um, really do think that it's amazing, great what we're going to talk about today uh, as it relates to the Google Citrix story. And I'll give you just a quick uh, synopsis of what that means to me as a you know, technology evangelist in the in user compute space. When I think Google, I think three things. I think um, Google Workspace, which is potentially the grandfather of all these digital workspaces, certainly around the SaaS application workloads. But in the world of Google, they know that they need some of those legacy x86 uh, applications to work there as well. So we're gonna talk about how Citrix brings that together. Uh, I think about Google Cloud uh, Platform, GCP. Uh, we can run anything there. Google's got a powerful data center footprint. Uh, Google has a very conducive mindset on getting workloads in there that's cost effective. And uh, they've got a modular way of paying for all that that really is a game changer. And then finally, what we're going to talk about today, which is that endpoint operating system that is part of this asynchronous solution. Um, and there's, you know, the, the landscape looks like this. There's Windows. Problem with that, it's Windows. There's Windows CE. This is Andy speaking. Uh, problem with that is it's Windows uh, SE, which is, oh, I said SE, SE, Secure Edition, still Windows. There's other Linux players. that are more of the thin client operating systems, which have their play. Uh, and then there's the extremely powerful world of Google, Chrome OS, Chrome OS Flex specifically, but Chrome OS in general, whether it's a Chromebook, Chromebox, um, several other options that existed at one point, but the Chrome OS that leverages the uh, Chrome operating system uh, to provide a very powerful use case for that works digital workspace world could be SaaS, could be SaaS plus x86 apps, could be virtual desktops, VDI server based, um, could be several different ways of accomplishing that. And that's what we're going to talk about today is the Chrome OS Flex. This is part of our every third Thursday webinar series and uh, super excited to have Google and Citrix and Zintegra, but Google and Citrix really bringing together what is an extremely powerful solution when you factor in workspaces, GCP, Chrome OS, and the Citrix footprint and stack that we've all known or a lot of us have known for a long time. So um, yes, I'm a technologist. I'm also president and CEO of Zintegra, but I just love community and love giving things away and bring power to that community in terms of enabling as well as fun stuff. So check it out, workhasnoboundaries.com. We're partnered with Citrix and Google and others to uh, give away two Ford Broncos here in a couple of weeks uh, at the end user compute portion of the VMware uh, Explorer conference that's coming up. So if you're not going to that conference, let us know, love to help you get there and love to host you at a party. We're gonna give away these two Ford Broncos. So what you do is go to workhasnoboundaries.com register to be part of our giveaway, uh, participate in some type of action, including you know coming to that, that event or uh, taking a meeting with us to talk about Google, Citrix, Zintegra, and that qualifies you to participate in this drawing. This so, so real quick, Andy, um, if you don't mind sharing the deck, you've got a fantastic photo of a Bronco I would hate for everyone to miss as a part of the giveaway. So ah. we could present. I thought I was. I would be remiss if I didn't say that. I thank you very much. That's why it takes a village, guys. <laughs> People like me just get rolling. All right. So workhasnoboundaries.com, two Broncos given away. Cost a lot of money. And we are literally giving those away. Um, somebody will own, two people will own Ford Broncos. In addition to that, at that party, we're also giving away an e-bike. So if you're going to be a VMware Explorer, please hit us up. Come to this event. Going to give away some really cool stuff. And have a good time. Hey, you know what? That was the voice of Jeremy Myers, who I don't think I actually have a slide on to tell about him. Uh, Jeremy and I do a ton of stuff together. Uh, but Jeremy is the uh, local director for sales engineering for Citrix, which I say local at this point. I think he has half the United States. Uh, Jeremy, yeah. you want to do real quick and give your, uh, give your background and why you're here with us today? Oh, excellent. Yeah. So I've been at Citrix for roughly uh, 10 years, right? In fact, Andy, um, when he... When he left Citrix to go start a partner, um, which he thought he could do a phenomenal job of, and what's funny is 10 years later, you look at this and go, well, he did. Um, 
I actually took over his spot, his role at Citrix. So I became the local SE here in the Carolinas, which over the years has just expanded into, um, you know, engineering ownership of the East Coast in Canada. So, um, you know, having said all that, I'm based here in North Carolina. I am roughly seven miles from the Zintegra office. And like Andy says, um, we do quite a bit together. So we host a podcast, which we cover a lot of these topics. Um, you know, I think we're both fans of technology. So I get super excited about what we're doing you know, clearly in the cloud side and all those things, but I think what we're doing from an endpoint perspective is incredibly powerful. And so I am, uh, geez, I have so many devices that are just, they sit around me right now um, that I'm converting and doing things with all the time. That's it's pretty neat. So I, this, I nerd out on stuff like this. So Jeremy is a community builder, a people person, a technologist, a nerd, all at the same time, just like most people at Zintegra. I am literally making new Chrome OS boot sticks while we're doing this webinar. Uh, and I wish we could hurry up and get done with the webinar so I can go get back in my lab and start playing again. Fun stuff. All right. Um, part of today's giveaway is these $50 gift, is a $50 Grubhub gift card, which we'll be giving away at the end. So stay tuned, be here at the end, listen, enjoy, ask questions. I haven't said that yet, but questions, throw those in the chat window and we'll do everything we can to answer those. If we don't have the answer, we'll get you the answer. Uh, but if you're here at the end, we're going to be giving away a a gift card that uh, Chase, I think, on the Zintegra side will help us figure out how we're going to do that. Uh, who is Zintegra? We are a reseller of products, services, products, software, hardware, services, managed service support, hosting, and just overall bringing solutions to market that uh, we believe in because we've vetted them, we, we've invested our time and effort into them, and that's where this whole Citrix Google story kicks in. Um, my background, you know, worked at Citrix for I don't know, I worked for a Citrix partner. That's probably the most important part. I worked for a Citrix partner prior to leaving that partner to go work for Citrix. Learned a ton of stuff there. Learned right and wrong and what it meant to really add value. Uh, had some time at Citrix, which was extremely successful and left because the opportunity to go build a community, add value to the vendors that we work with, the vendors that we serve, the customers that we serve, the people that we partner with on both sides of that equation. Really a no-brainer. You know, Jeremy, mentioned that we've been successful. It's been wildly successful beyond my beliefs. And it really just comes back to that core idea of, you know, building a community around solutions that we believe in and helping people execute on that is a business model, which it is, has been for a long time. All right. So we have with us uh, Andrea Swanson. Andrea is a global pre-sales engineer at Citrix, or uh, should I say the Citrix portion of Cloud Software Group? Is that a fair way to say it? Yes, absolutely. 23 years in the industry, telecom, data center, security, virtualization, probably a whole lot of other stuff. Andrea, why are you the person <laughs> on this uh, webinar, do a lot of podcasts, uh, with us representing Google and Citrix? Great question. Uh, so I support everyone on our Citrix and Google teams from building out the whole environment for Citrix to work on Chrome OS devices and Chrome OS Flex devices. And so I'm here to help you guys learn a little bit more about Flex today and how that partnership with Citrix is working. Yeah. And that's going to be awesome. Again, guys, throw your questions in the chat window. Um, yeah, Andrea, I'll tell you what. So I will, since I have the slides, I'll advance them. Just nudge me when it's time to go forward or backwards. Sounds good. Thanks. All right. So today we're going to kind of hit on a couple of things. We're going to teach you a little bit about Chrome OS Flex, the hybrid work solution and how it works with Citrix today, as well as some of the sustainability pieces of it. This is the really hot topic going around because there's a lot of misinformation out there. So I want to help you guys understand how you can repurpose some of the old devices you have and how that can save your companies a lot of money as well as help the earth as well. Um, let's, we'll actually talk about some use cases and then I'd like to speak to the Citrix Ready program because this is where Flux has actually been really, really um, successful in some of the areas of retail and um, healthcare. And then also we're going to show you how to deploy Chrome OS Flux and go from there. Good to go, Andy, on the next slide. Andrea, all I care about is how much does it cost? <laughs> Zero dollars. <laughs> that. So as you'll see in front of you here, this is the Citrix and Chrome OS Flex hybrid work solution. Um, the great thing about this is, is that 
we can flex over any device, whether it be a PC, a Mac, or even a thin client in some cases. Um, those old devices that you have sitting in the corner, we can go ahead and reuse them. What's going to happen is, is you're going to get your Citrix workstation sitting on top of any of the old devices you have. Um, and the great part of it is, is that within the Citrix app, it's always secure. You've got all your apps and desktops at your fingertips of all times. The Chrome browser is secure, completely set up for you, as well as you're getting an overall experience within Chrome as well as Citrix. Um, there's layered security between Google and Citrix, which is the greatest piece of this, as well as you're able to manage all this with a Chrome OS, um, sorry, a Chrome Enterprise upgrade license that can match all these devices so that you can feel secure that none of your data is getting out into the wrong hands. So Andrea, this this thing that we have here, um, it looks and feels like something people are familiar with, like a Chromebook? Correct. So you, um, so basically, if you're sitting in front of your Windows device, Andy, you were actually doing it right before mm -hmm. this, uh, you're sitting on your Windows device and you are flexing over to utilize Chrome OS on that Windows device so that old operating system will be gone, the new Chrome OS operating will, the system will be there. And then with your Citrix virtualization environment, you can go into the admin council, go ahead and add your JSON file, and you can start your Citrix session and get that storefront straight up in front of you and start working right away. And and you've said it a lot. I'm just going to highlight something. You're, you guys are actually converting Macs supported as well? Yes, Macs, PCs, and thin clients. So x86 PCs, x86 Macs. And if you want a, two, a true Google thing, then you buy a true Google Chromebook and you get the same thing too. Correct. That's I love that story because look, Apple has sold a lot of units over the last few years. Of course, PCs of all types. What are we going to do with all those old, all those old Apple products that are sitting out there? We're going to just throw them all away. It's great. This is this is actually where education is coming in this space really big because they are coming to that point where their units are end of life, and so how do they bring them back without a budget? And this is a great way to do that. I mean, it's almost a shame to throw away all those really high-end hardware Apple devices that somebody paid $2,300 for seven years ago. And now somebody, now, now I'm understanding that it's garbage or maybe it's not. It's actually not. If they're willing to give up their OS system with their Mac, then, and they want to experience the Chrome OS environment, this is where they can go. So we got a couple of questions here in the chat. So I'll start with the, I'm going to reverse the order here. So James has a couple of questions. The first one is, um, are there any, any, any plans to expand beyond um, the x86 devices to, of course, uh, Apple has an M1, M2 device now. Any roadmap around supporting OS Flex or Chrome OS Flex on Apple Silicon? Sorry, great question. I knew I was on mute. <laughs> um, so great question. Yes, you can go to our, um, the Flex website. You can click on the link and it will actually show you the number of devices that are used. The other thing is, is that we're actually looking for people to test. So if there's devices that you don't find on the website that are able, that are considered ready to go, you can actually be someone who tests that and lets us know how it works out for you if there's any problems. And we can then add that to the list of number of devices that you're able to flex over. And that list is growing exponentially daily. Gotcha. Now there is a different question here. It goes a little bit of a di different direction. So I'll go ahead and field this in real quick. Um, so another question around the difference between Chrome Enterprise Device Manager between the Citrix control plane hosted in GCP versus Azure. So there are two things here. Number one, regardless of where your control plane sits. So originally, you know, the DAS control plane sat in Azure. Uh, recently, we've included the ability to host that in GCP. So two different options here. Uh, feature parity wise um, are the same, uh, but we have introduced gateway service pops that are in GCP as well as Azure. Um, if you have the full DAS offering, you have the option of doing either, honestly. Um, but there, there is a GCP specific and an Azure specific, um, DAS standard offering as well. Um, and there's some deltas there that probably we don't have time to get into right now. Um, uh, but ultimately, um, 
regardless of what control plane you're using, you can actually host workloads in either cloud. So let's just say you have the Azure control plane. We have plenty of customers hosting workloads in GCP. And on the flip side, um, if you spin up your, your control plane in GCP, you should be able to host in Azure as well. So there's a lot wrapped up into that. Um, I'm not sure if that necessarily touches on the device manager piece of that, James, but we might just have to, might have to circle back on that one. Well, it does, though, Jeremy, highlight the ecosystem of what is Google plus Citrix inter, interwinding itself to the point where it's a holistic solution all the way from the management of this Chrome OS and other things endpoint back into the uh, the Citrix environment that is control planed in GCP and potentially the virtual desktops or apps being hosted in GCP or some other cloud. No, you're absolutely right. You're absolutely right. So there's very much an, um, so Citrix is always going to be a little, ag I'd say agnostic is open is really what it is. And so, you know, listen, this is a big demand, believe it or not, um, to host the, the control plane in GCP. In fact, GCP is an identity. Um, GCP is a compute platform. Um, and I think what we're seeing here is if you, uh, we have the option to do a complete ecosystem in, in Google, which is, which is pretty neat, actually. Well, that's where I want to pause you. Google is the only ecosystem where other than the Windows virtual desktop running the legacy or x86 Windows app covers the entire, that with Citrix and Windows somewhere in the middle there is the most end-to-end -end solution you can get for Citrix. That's so what makes it so relevant. Um, now, next one, Andy, and you might be the best person to touch on this. Again, we've got... Um, we got some folks who are IGEL customers that are, or, or, or Stratadex customers. Like what sets those solutions, this apart from those solutions? Yeah, so look, you if you know who I am, you know I love those other solutions as well. Heck, I love Windows. But at the end of the day, I need to use a solution that makes the most sense for the organization, which very well could be a Google OS enabled endpoint, either because it's a Google Chromebook or because it's a piece of hardware that I converted to the Google OS. Um, the, the truth is you need to use the operating system that best solves the problem and makes your end users happy. One of the most interesting things about the, this isn't Microsoft windows conversation when it comes to Chrome OS is the, uh, the fact that it's a, it's an OS that probably most, if not all of your end users have, have interacted with before. And it was built from day one to be consumer end user, um, smarts. Right. It's it's been it the idea is that you could hand this to your grandmother and she could probably go do it. You could handle it, handle it to a kid, and they can certainly go do it. Guess what? They use it in school. You can hand it to my uh, you know, my 21-year-old daughter, and she's gonna be able to do great at it because her entire way through school, she's done nothing but use Chrome OS or at least use Chrome, and all of this stuff is gonna look familiar. Uh Andrew, you wanna run through because you probably have more context, the bullets you have there. Sure. So a lot of the reasons why customers are switching over with, with Flex, you know, you're looking at things like there is the reducing power consumption, reducing e-waste. Um, there's never antivirus needed, which has really a, been a big one. Um, Chrome OS has never had a ransomware attack. We also help with blocking apps and extensions by remotely controlling all of the Chrome OS Flex devices. Um, with the multi-layered security approach from CoreOS and, and Citrix. Uh, they're easily able to be shared with any of their employees. They can access the VDI on any device in just seconds, which some of our providers don't have that opportunity. Um, you can also reduce the employee downtime, right? With updates that happen in the background, that's one of the biggest features between Chrome OS because mm -hmm. when it comes to security, that is our number one priority. You can also deploy the, the devices faster with the zero touch enrollment and drop shipping, something that Zentegra does for their customers as well. Yeah. And then once you factor all that in, and then you may have a slide on this, and then you onboard that into the, uh, the as a service born in the cloud management platform, it just mm -hmm. made your life super easy. Absolutely. And the other part of it is it's all free to our clients. There is no cost of flexing any of those devices at that point, which is a great opportunity for our customers. Yeah. Well, certainly the endpoint cost is free. And then there's a the subscription side of the admin stuff, which we'll get to, I'm sure. 
There are customers that we do work with that use unmanaged devices. Not that I am absolutely saying that that's the way to go. Um, but if you are choosing to do that option, you can as well. No, 100%, 100%. So Andrea, tell me if you want me to proceed. Yep, you can go on to the next one. All right, so here's some of the reasons why our customers are choosing to work with us. As we said with Flex, Security, it's inherently secured OS that protects people from security breaches and your bottom line profitability from your costly attacks. Um, as I mentioned with the, we've never had a ransomware attack and we've actually, we've flexed multiple customers out of paying a ransomware because of this. Um, so that's one of the reasons. Another one is modern work experience. It's like you said before, right? It's a cloud first OS benefiting the planet. It empowers people to do their best work, whether they're in the office, they're working remotely, or they're working anywhere in between. Always a fast deployment. So we have super fast deployment for teams of all sizes and the ability for everyone to be easily easily able to manage any of their fleets from absolutely anywhere as well. It's basically making the most of the hardware you already have using savings with total cost of ownership by expanding the hardware and having in place is probably sitting around in your back room. So we're just kind of making that old devices new again. Hey, quick highlight, Jeremy mentioned a while ago, hey, you might be the best person to talk about the different options. And I showed you guys this before. This is, if you can see my webcam, this is a, these are all the bootable USBs that I carry around. I'm making another one right now uh, so that I can play and force myself to use all the different technologies throughout a week to learn and benefit in some of these things that we're talking about so far in the presentation. Andy, you can move ahead. I think this is where the story gets really exciting for most people. And like I said, there's there's a lot of mess around sustainability within the Grom Loss field. Um, so Jeremy, did you know the amount of e-waste generated in 2023 is expected to be 61.3 million tons of e-waste, which is equivalent to the weight of 168 Empire State Buildings? I had no idea. I had no idea. But as, <laughs> right. a, as, as someone who used to retire laptops on a frequent basis, I get it. That makes sense. Yep. Well, another big reasons why our customers are considering to work with Citrix and Chrome OS Flex is we're creating a measurable and positive impact on the environment. So with Chrome OS Flex, you're able to make your older hardware more sustainable and reduce power consumption. There is a reported 32% energy reduction with Citrix and Chrome OS devices. So that means a reduced carbon footprint by the equivalent of 3,700 acres of mature forest. Chromebooks are made with sustainable recycled materials as well, and they use power management capabilities to make charging efficient and reduce power consumption. With the Chrome OS Flex devices though, you can delay the need to purchase a new device and run more efficiently, efficiently by about 19% with significant cost and environmental savings can be realized with avoiding purchases of new devices, obviously, energy saving from increased efficiency and subscription cost savings as well. Um, with that, we're also looking at the focus on sustainability from preventing existing devices from entering landfills by extending useful life of your old devices and allowing your business to give their existing devices a new life and increase the efficiency of devices in use. One of the biggest things our customers say to us is when they choose to flex a device is that, wow, it actually works a lot faster than it ever did when it was first brand new. Yeah. And, and it doesn't continually degrade as you use it and put more junk on it. Correct. Exactly, which is great. And especially being in a cloud first uh, environment, you're putting all that stuff, you're not having to worry about any of the data leaving it on into the actual device itself. So you're actually protecting yourself from any of the attacks coming forward. Hey, Andrew, I'm gonna do a quick promo. Uh, mm -hmm. Zintegra has a nonprofit we started that actually uses Chrome OS to convert uh, devices that people donate so that we can help with this issue of sustainability and e-waste. Uh, we also do nonprofit consulting for non other nonprofits. Uh, this previous slide, the one we have here on the screen now, is near and dear to my heart because it's uh, something I've been 
see as a problem. And I've invested uh, time and money into trying to solve the problem by this nonprofit. We started to serve nonprofit. So if you're a nonprofit on the call, or if you work with a nonprofit or know a nonprofit that uh, works with Google around workspaces or uh, endpoints uh, or uh, GCP or just needs help in technology in general, let us know so that we can go help them make money, serve back to them and serve other nonprofits. Uh, I just want to do a quick promo there. That's awesome. Uh, go back one more. Yep. So not just Google, and this is why we love working together, Citrix and Google. So Citrix, to summarize this, if a company who has about a thousand computer users, all with Citrix technologies could reduce end user computing device emissions by about almost 90% annually. You could also reduce commuting emissions to up to 40% if employees work from home just two days a week. Also increasing the lifespan of their devices by two extra years and reducing their embodied end user computing device emissions by almost 40% annually. And they can move their on-premise data centers to a 44% more energy efficient data center powered by 100% renewable energy. Jeremy, do you wanna to touch on any of that? Um, I mean, listen, this, this makes sense. I think what customers are going for big time, obviously is trying to manage costs. And I mean, this is a big part of it, make it sustainable, but at the end of the day, does it make financial sense? And being able to both extend and reduce that cost footprint is it, it's kind of from two different perspectives there for sure. So I'm sure we're going to touch on this some, but you're mm -hmm. doing this sustainability effort through Google and Citrix. Meanwhile, you're enabling this thing called remote or hybrid work, and you're minimizing the mm -hmm. security attack of things like ransomware. It is it is green, and green is good for everybody. And green isn't necessarily just about saving the planet. It's part of it. But green can actually also mean saving money. Absolutely. All right, so how are our customers deploying? There's many different use cases out there. So whether the industry you're in, I'm sure we can kind of work through it. But some of the biggest ones that I've seen here and you, as far as the verticals go and that we've had some really great excess, success would be basically remote and hybrid workers, right? As we all know, we went through the pandemic together, all of us together, we all had to move from the office into our own home situations and some companies are coming back to work and some companies are doing a hybrid where you're working at home and you're working in the office and some companies are saying, you know what, just stay home. So these are some great ways for our customers to work with Chrome OS Flex. Um, also, you've got some of the basic security and remote, um, the optimization, sorry, securing and optimizing contact centers. Uh, so customers who are in the contact centers, you're able to have great Citrix ready validated solutions. I'll talk to that on the next slide. But basically what we're going to talk about is how Citrix is saying, you know, they've been in the industry for 40 plus years doing this for many, many years in the enterprise space. They have many customers that they have great success with. They're validating some of our solutions that we're putting together for not only contact centers, but healthcare and retail and many, many other options as well. So what was interesting about this is, I mean, I've been around the Chrome ecosystem for a while and, you know, HP, Acer, I mean, a lot of these vendors have had a really good relationship with Google in the sense that they're creating these, these devices. So these are OEM devices with Chrome OS, right? Got that, right? But I think during the pandemic, when a lot of folks did go home, you know, a lot of the big use cases were around call centers, right? I mean, that was, that was number one. Um, so it's been interesting to follow the ecosystem, get out of hardware into software. So you see Improvada here, man, that's huge in healthcare, right? Um, you know, Ring Central, Vonage, you know, what's not on the list here is, you know, some of the other vendors that do, you know, voice, but there's an integration with Chrome OS, with the Citrix workspace app for Chrome OS, that just really makes that experience a whole lot better. So it's been interesting to follow just the ecosystem of third-party vendors who are integrating in with Chrome OS just to improve this experience. This is really neat to see. Like this program's huge, the Citrix Ready program. So yeah. Jim, I'll add to that a little bit. So you got Google and these folks, these uh, other technology companies certifying the work together for Google natively. But mm -hmm. when you take the Citrix Workspace app, certify it to do everything it does for Google that it does for say Windows, then you turn around and validate these other resources within the Citrix Ready program. 
you by proxy of Citrix have enabled all these other Citrix ready ecosystem vendors to be also Google ready. Yes. Absolutely. The key to this is making sure that their environment works together, right? So all these solutions are working together. Citrix is validating every one of these solutions. So Andy, if you skip ahead to the next slide, I'll show you a little bit about how this works. I'm going to take it through Flex first. Um, we'll go through health, uh, retail and then healthcare. I can show you a little bit that, about how this works. So Say for instance, a customer has a Dell laptop, they want that flexed over, they want to be able to use that Chrome OS on there, and that customer is also using webcams, signature pads, they've got label printers, the regular printers, dual monitors, and even headsets that they're wanting to use. These peripherals that we're working on to make sure that they're completely certifiable, ready out of the box right from day one. And on top of it, they're able to use those applications that they're using, whether they be legacy applications like Microsoft Teams, they're at Amazon Chime, there's Fox IT, PDF readers, there's many different options that they can go through and know that right out of the box, everything works together. And that is the key to this partnership with Google and Citrix, right? We wanna make sure that our customers, the minute that they either open their Chromebook or flex their device to a new Chrome in their new Chrome OS system on their existing device, they're able to use those peripherals, whether they're at home or at work. Yeah, and that's key too, is making, making it clear that this can, this can be both their home device, their work device, or very securely and safely their home and work device. Whereas with some of the other operating systems, you might question whether that was something you're willing to do or not. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. If you wanna skip ahead to the next one, we'll talk a little bit about retail and those same Citrix Ready validated solutions. Um, so as you'll see here, I'm sorry, I just killed my screen. <laughs> I'll check this, everyone, give me a second. Um, as you'll see here, this is this is actually for contact centers. I apologize, I had the wrong screen up. Um, so what you're seeing here is for contact centers. And this is, as Jeremy mentioned, this was a huge, huge hit for us because contact centers were some of our largest customers coming to us during the pandemic and had very, very big concerns about how they were going to get their people to work from their physical offices into their homes and make sure it's secure, safe, and they still have the applications that they need, right? And so, like we said, those companies like Ring Central, Vonage, there's many others that are, are getting Citrix certified, Citrix Ready certified. So you will see that these are this not an exhaustive list. This list will continue to grow as we continue to certify more and more of our OEM partners as well as the endpoints and peripherals that are able to be used right out of the box from day one. That, that's it's a pretty good list to begin with. Uh, the next one I'll talk to you about healthcare. All right, so um, for those of you that attended HIMSS and may have seen me last week in Chicago here, uh, where I'm actually located, but we were here talking about a lot of things when it came to healthcare and how we're changing healthcare. And as Andy mentioned earlier, you know, that Inverbata and um, Citrix and Chrome story is very big, right? Hospitals are extremely needing to be able to use their badge tapping, their workstations on wheels. And unfortunately for myself, I, I was a patient back in November. I got to see firsthand some of the concerns that nurses and doctors are having when they're doing this badge tapping options. And so making sure that these Chrome OS Flex devices and our Chromebooks are working together with companies like Improvata for their badge tapping, their workstation on wheels is working for them. The signature pads that they're having to use to sign documents are working, as well as multi-monitors in some situations, and or just the ability to walk from one location as a, a doctor is in one building into the hospital location and having all this information at their fingertips and being able to work as they go is a huge opportunity for our customers. All right, so how does it deploy? Well, I'm gonna ask Andy a question. 
Today, he actually got to see how easy it was. Um, we actually do have USB bootable sticks that can we can send out to customers. But if you don't have that, you can easily, and I'll put in the link in the chat on how you can go to Chrome OS and request your bootable link. You put that on your USB stick, stick it into the actual device you're looking to, and you can flex over that to have it into your new Chrome OS device. Well, let's just go through it. You just Google Chrome OS Flex. I'm gonna throw it in here. Yep, so Chrome OS Flex is where you go to, and then you'll see get Chrome OS Flex for PCs and Macs, and then you'll try, you'll click the try Chrome OS Flex and fill out the form. It's super simple and easy. Once you do that, Andy, what did they do from there? Well, once you get through this, uh, well, I'll put all my information in there. Uh, once you get through this, you um, you get prompted to the uh, install guide, and then the install guide provides you step by step with beautiful pictures on um, what to you what you can what how to do it, including the download link. And then for me personally, just a little nugget here, I used uh, this tool right here. Sorry, I use this tool right here, um, uh, Belina Etcher. Uh, to uh, look to grab the bin file. So it's not an ISO file, it's a bin file. This tool was smart enough to take that file and apply it to a USB drive, make it a bootable USB drive. You stick it in the device of your choice, which I'm doing right now beside me. Um, and it asks you, do you want to just use Chrome OS from this USB stick? Or do you want to convert the hard drive of this machine, which you could also just throw a little uh, USB nub in there, use that instead. Um, do you want to convert the machine's hard drive to Chrome OS Flex, or do you want to just run Chrome OS Flex off the, the uh, USB drive you create here? That's it. Yep. It's as easy as that. Makes it super simple. And Andy actually did it right before our call within the first like three minutes, which was great to see. So how easy it is and how it works. Um, and, and to be clear, I, I did it for the call because I've got an older version that I've been using for my nonprofit for, you know, two years now. Um, maybe we explain that real quick. So some of you guys might have heard of a company called Never Re Never Wear Cloud Ready, which was funded in its startup infancy partially by Google. Google acquired that company. I don't know that we said this a few minutes ago, but they acquired them. So if you're familiar with Cloud Ready from Neverwhere, that's what Chrome OS, that's where it came from. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. All right. Andy, we're on the last slide now. So one, yep, there you go. So consistent work experience. And this is one of the reasons why I love this um, option. You hey, can uh, transform. Andrew, can I do something real quick? Sure. I want to call out to this group. I am literally doing this right now, but I am doing it on a laptop I bought off of uh, an e-commerce provider a few months ago for 200 bucks. And at the end of this, at, by the time it's installed, it's going to work really well. Now, I'm not telling you to go out and buy $200 devices as your go-to-market strategy. But with a technology like this, you get to control your own destiny. And you might find that $200 x86 devices can solve a lot of your use case needs when you're delivering workloads from a Citrix, from a, a cloud type solution. Sorry, I interrupted you, but go ahead. No, you're good. Again, uh, just reiterating what, you know, Andy and Jeremy have said, right? It's a consistent work experience from anywhere. We can transfer many of your PCs, Macs, or thin clients to the new modern OS. It's, you know, just kind of letting you know it's got those devices that boot up quickly. They don't slow down over time. That's one of the biggest questions that I get asked, right? My old device used to slow down all over time. It does not happen because there, it's so lightweight and sits you know, on top of the the device you currently had. So it takes up the properties of Chrome OS then. You also have fast access to your, all your apps, desktops, and files in a complete and unified view from Citrix, which is great. And I love that there's new custom, custom ability features this year from Citrix, which is really exciting. Also, as well as the Citrix HDX, which delivers that better native performance for all your video audio and peripherals that you have. Um, and then, as I mentioned, right, your updates are happening in in the background, which is really cool because if I'm working, I want to be working, right? Like I've got six <laughs> different screens up right now and those things are not being interrupted by any of the updates that may be happening in the background. 
And then as always, you can log on from any device and pick up where you left off. I think that's one of the biggest, coolest features for most people. Um, last week, like I said, I was at HIMSS. I didn't want to connect into anything. I had to set up a couple of presentations that I was doing for HIMSS, and I was able to edit and adjust those right beforehand all not being on Wi-Fi, which is a really cool experience. So that switch over really quickly makes it really easy. And for our customers to know that they could be working offline. And then as soon as you're back in a Wi-Fi environment, that stuff is all saved and you're ready to go. So Andrea, I know this is a little cheesy, but I literally did this entire thing. Well, now it's already shut down and ready to go during the webinar. <laughs> it, guys, it's that easy. And then maybe if I hang out here for a few more minutes, I'll actually have it onboarded into my Google environment, therefore connected to Citrix by the time Chase gives away the Grubhub. We'll see. <laughs> exactly. It's as easy as that. I love these con conversations that I have when I do some of these webinars or some of my trainings. And I was like, I already did it. It was done during training. And I was like, wow, great. See, it's as easy as that, which is awesome. So let me let me ask you this, Andrea. So, and we've talked about the endpoint and the Chrome OS and you know flexing devices, but from a management perspective, right? So I'm managing this from the Google admin console, right? But um, you know, how easy is it? So obviously, Andy, you know, he downloaded, flashed the device, um, or he didn't flash the device. He just flashed the USB, stuck it in, booted, boom, there he goes. No, actually, well, I did. I Created you flashed the whole thing, okay. I flashed the hard drive, I think, and I just now noticed this. I think I actually flashed the um, the little extra um, um, SIM card, not SIM card, the little extra memory stick that was in the laptop, not even knowing it. I think I flashed that. I won't know until a second, until a few minutes. <laughs> this. So, so Andy is going to boot this guy up for the first time, and he's going to log in using his Google credentials. Um, what's going to happen next? Like out of the, out of the gate, brand new Great device. Question. So it's a brand new device. It's going to ask you little questions, right? Like let's connect to your Wi-Fi, which is super simple. So if you're at home or if you're at the office, you have all that information. So it's going to ask you for your password, uh, to connect to the device. And then from there, it's going to ask you to set up any of your corporate email. So if Andy wants to go ahead and start his corporate email pieces of this, this is where the Chrome enterprise upgrade license comes into effect. Mm -hmm. um, you're, if he wants to manage those, what he wants to do is actually obtain a Chrome enterprise upgrade license to manage that device as well as any of the other ones. If you're using it from an unmanaged device standpoint, which I don't suggest, you literally just have everything right there. You can either go to the Google mm -hmm. Play Store or the Google Web Store to download any applications that you want to start using. You can pull up your Gmail accounts or your corporate accounts from corporate from there. You can set it up that way. It's completely up to you. If you're setting it up from a corporate standpoint, um, if you're in a company, obviously they would have to add that device into their actual organizational unit or um, they can go ahead and give you a link that you can you can click on that'll actually automatically update that device into their organization as well. Yeah, I imagine a lot of folks doing this at enterprise scale. That's probably what they're going to want to do, right? Is I'm going to log in for the first time and either A, put me into a default bucket where policies get pushed down or B, you know, somehow tie this into my, my account and start pushing down Jeremy specific policies, right? Yep. Um, so that, you know, within minutes, my email is configured, any of the apps I've got pushed out, you know, any of, the, any of the pieces that I need to do my job are just kind of pushed out and managed for me. Yes, absolutely. That's the best part of it. Um, it's very easy to connect that device, whether he wants to give them the information over the phone. So like I say, it's your IT group and you mm -hmm. want to go ahead and give them that information, or you can just send him a link and it'll automatically set up his um, device in the correct organizational unit that you guys have already chose. And then all that information is there is like you said, it pushes down all the applications that you're looking to run. If Citrix is part of your environment, Citrix is already there. You just click on the Citrix workspace app. It automatically loads your storefronts there, all your apps, desktops, completely in front of you at, at the start. All right. So I'm going to ask you a little bit of a curveball, right? Hey, so real quick, real quick on yeah. the topic though, Andrea, building out the management control system for that scenario that you just pointed out, because in general, most companies are not going to want to do this non-managed. You could. Right. And, and by the way, for our, our technical friends on the phone or on the call on the phone, how old am I? On the webinar, 
you you might you might play with this but you probably would you wouldn't roll it out in your production environment that way more than likely andrea the uh the back-end infrastructure that it took if you manage that environment how long did that take to set up it's very easy the great part about the admin console once you have the chrome enterprise upgrade license you literally go to google.admin.com and it takes you straight to the admin console all you have to do is put in your username and password and you're in the admin console. And the greatest part about that is, is you can set up all the organizational units completely the way you want them to. It's very quick and easy to utilize. You can download devices super quick and fast. You can push the policies. Um, as we showed in the last um, webinar we did, it was super easy for our customers to just go ahead and download the Citrix Workspace app from the Chrome Web Store. And then from there, they would just paste their JSON file and then all the users would have the Citrix Workspace app on their Chrome devices that they pushed them out to. Um, so all that stuff is very easy to do and manage. And from a security standpoint, um, the great part about that is there's over 500 plus policies and procedures within the admin console that can be adjusted to help within security, right? So if you're looking for things like Citrix does with copy and paste, so there's, there's no ability to let that data go from their screens that they're seeing from day one, those features are also available within their either their Citrix control plane and or the Google admin console as well. So Andrea, I did a really, you, you did a really good job answering the question the way I asked it. What I meant to say was how long, how many servers did you have to stand up? How many, how much of that server infrastructure madness did it take and how long the answer was none. It's just none. as a service, <laughs> it's a native web service. Uh, all yeah. you, then you went in and did all your configurations and stuff, but you know, architecting some highly available enterprise worthy backend, it's just there. You don't have to do it. Jeremy, I'm sorry, you had a question. I cut you off to get that point across. Hit My it. question was, um, let it come back to me. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So um, <laughs> listen, a lot of organizations have obviously standardized on Windows, right? I mean, that's their endpoint OS, thing like that, right? So the whole idea of introducing a new operating system usually means there's some vetting out from a security team that's got to go into place, right? Yeah. So I, I guess the question, because this, this is one of the things that came through, is what has that conversation been like with you know, IT security, hey, we're introducing a new OS. It's something new, we've got to vet it out. You know, what sort of feedback have you gotten? Yep, great question. A lot of times um, when I'm talking to the security teams, I really am stressing on the layered approach to security because that's really important to them because there's layers upon layers of security built into um, the Chrome OS piece of it. Um, so those kinds of conversations is a lot of what we're seeing. The other part of it is, is we're explaining to users um, because one of the biggest challenges they were like, oh, is my keyboard going to work differently? And in some senses, a little bit it will. But the cool thing is we can program those same function keys that you currently have to be identical to what you used to use. So giving that user that experience on, say, for instance, a Chrome OS Flex device, they've been using a PC for a very long time. They, we, we can go ahead and reprogram some of those function keys that we have on our side, right? That's different to mimic what they're used to on the Microsoft side. Uh, the great thing about that is, is that that really helps security feel more control um, of the things that they do. And especially as I explained, they can set up many different features within the Google Admin Council and lock it down to the point where literally the screen they see is the only option they have. So if they want to log into their Citrix storefront and that is the only option they see with all their apps already in in the desktop, then that's it. If they don't want to give them any more access outside of that, they don't have to. That's the great part of the conversations that we're seeing from a security standpoint and kind of getting through some of those security hurdles. A little bit of a kiosk mode, I guess, is what you're saying. Yep. Yep. On, on, on the flip side, you know, there's usually a standard it's because, again, we're talking about Windows endpoints around agents and security and AV. I mean, you touched on AV earlier, but mm -hmm. um, you know, I guess in this case, there's there's less from an agent perspective, obviously still within if you're delivering a Windows app, Windows desktop, you know, via workspace app, you know, that doesn't change. But um, I mean, how does that conversation go around, hey, we can reduce just that endpoint lift? I mean, these are things you don't have to support anymore. Yep. Um, so the one thing is, is a lot of times customers that do flex devices, so they 
because the OS is so lightweight and everything is stored not on the device, um, those questions get kind of answered in the beginning. But the other part of it is a lot of times customers are looking for, they want to be able to use Microsoft Teams, right? They still want to be able to use those legacy applications. And that's a big feature around it, right? And so we want to make sure they have access to that um, and kind of pushing that out to their end users and making sure that they have that kind of consistent experience that they received prior to all this. Um, I think the biggest part of what end users see is the boot up times, right? Like you boot up your new Flex device, it's three seconds and they're in with their corporate login and they're able to get running and going, right? So they're not sitting there and waiting for updates in the background to be happening or they have to hit a button. It's like upgrade, update now. And they're like, I don't know if it's gonna be five minutes or 10 minutes, which is utilizing basically into productivity time for them. So those are some of the some of the features within that they're getting with Chrome OS Flex too. All right, last question before we hand it over to Chase. Uh, from a management perspective, I'm doing this out of the same console I'm managing G Suite out of, or is this a, a separate console? Yeah, so great question. So the admin console is exactly the same as if they were to utilize it through Chrome OS Flex, or th sorry, through Chrome OS, whether it's the GCP workspace app or it's the same, it's all the same. The functionality is just a little different if they're using it with Chrome OS. Um, Andy's team is really good at talent, you know, kind of giving the customer that experience. G uh, the workspace can be a little bit more daunting and a longer time for customers to set that up, right? Because there's a lot of more moving parts where Chrome OS, you're actually able to get up and get going right away, have all those security features in place and then utilize um, and then start looking at workspace after that if they're, you know, they're not a workspace customer currently. Got it. And I can still turn on role-based access to that administration console as well. So I can have someone just in charge of endpoint management yep. just in the way I've got someone. I got it. Okay. Yeah. So the great thing is, is when you set up your users, you can set them up as power users, as other application, you know, administration users. There's mm -hmm. multiple levels of different users that you want to give access to, which also satisfies what security is looking for too, right? They don't want everyone having access to everything. Got it. Okay. Perfect. Perfect. All right, so All right, I think, what was my error message that I showed? Was that when I held up the laptop? It said flash failed is what it was. So for whatever reason, if you flashed that USB stick with that utility, I'm amazed because it did say that it failed. So there you go. <laughs> Same. <laughs> well, let me show you this then. Give me like 20 seconds. I'll show you one that did work. I uh, What I've got to do is I've got to go back and uh, I got to go back and do a brand new nub because that flash stick, I'm not, I'm not smart enough to make that one work. I guess is what I'm saying. <laughs> uh, but fun stuff, guys. Thank you, thank you for the time. I think uh, Jeremy, you've been monitoring the chat window and the questions. We, we got them all right. I, I think we got them all. I think we got them all. I think we did. We'll follow up here. Someone wants to deep dive on something, but we got them. Well, if somebody wants to follow up, have a conversation. Myself, Google, all of the above. Citrix, Zintegra, bringing it all together. Uh, it really, guys, is a pretty cool thing. And we, you know, I, I will say this. Um, we uh, inherited a customer from another partner that had a fairly sizable Chrome OS, aka in this case, Chromebook rollout, 5,000 units. We were able to work with Citrix to, to add a couple features to the Workspace app. We have real sizable, scalable working examples of this solution for you guys to learn from and help you guys solve similar problems as that existing customer of ours. So with that, um, I don't know how we're giving away the uh, growth club. I guess- uh, After the call. After the call, okay. So someone from Zintegra will be in touch with somebody on this call to let you know that you won the growth Hub giveaway. Guys, I appreciate the time and uh, and, you know, this is just a fun solution to play with and relevant for sure. Thanks for having us, Andy. We're excited to uh, help your customers, you know, work their way through Chrome OS Flex or even with their Chromebooks. All right, guys. Thank you. All right, guys. Take Thanks. it easy. Have a good one.